Hello again, and welcome back to Operations Management. In this session, we're going to be talking about inventory aggregation. By aggregation, I'm saying that we are actually merging warehouses or combining inventory stores. When we think about merging inventory, there's two different ways to consider it. One is physical centralization. That's where we're actually taking different warehouses or different storerooms and combining all of the items into one facility. Another way to consider it is virtually. Instead of putting them all in one place, we're sharing a single inventory data system so that items can be shipped from one facility or another facility, but all of the inventory is kept as a single unit. When we do this, there are advantages and disadvantages. The significant advantages of this are that we get better accuracy in our forecasting. Because we're combining lots of different places together, we lose some of that variability, and so we have a much better accuracy for forecasting. The other advantage is that we can get better customer service in terms of our service level with the same level of inventory as if we had a decentralized system. Disadvantages are if we are locating it in one place, we can increase the response time to the customer and we can possibly increase shipment costs. When we bring together all the products that are similar and we're pulling it together, we're going to have a combined safety stock. Now this equation should look somewhat familiar to you because we're creating a safety stock by using a Z statistic associated with the service level and a standard deviation of the lead time demand. What's different about it is that we're using a standard deviation of the lead time demand for one location and then multiplying it by the square root of the number of locations that we're combining. So let's see how this works. A major online retailer has seven warehouses, and at each warehouse they maintain inventory for AA batteries. The average lead time demand for each warehouse is 200, with a standard deviation of 30, and we're trying to have a 95% service level. We're going to look at this two ways. One is we're going to look at an individual warehouse and figure out the safety stock and the reorder point. And then we're also going to take a look at what happens when we combine all seven warehouses together, calculate the safety stock, and that reorder point. Beginning with one warehouse, this looks familiar. We have our standard deviation of the lead time demand of 30. We calculate our Z statistic associated with a 95% service level. So when we bring that together, we have our Z statistic of 1.645. We multiply it by the standard deviation of the lead time demand of 30, and we're going to get a safety stock of 50 units. Remember, we round up. Then let's calculate the reorder point for that warehouse. The lead time demand was 200. We add in our 50 units for safety. And so when we get down to 250 units in inventory, that's when we're going to place our order. Pretty simple. Now what happens if we have seven warehouses and we combine them together? Now we're going to use that formula for combined safety stock. We're using the same Z statistic, 1.645, the same standard deviation of the lead time demand of 30, but now we're combining seven warehouses together. So we're going to multiply it by the square root of seven. So now our total safety for all seven warehouses, all combined, is 131 units. So now remember, we have one single warehouse that is taking the place of seven warehouses. So now our reorder point is seven times that 200 for the lead time demand. 200 was one warehouse. We're now looking at seven of them. We add in our safety stock of 131. So the reorder point for the combined warehouse is 1,531 units. Now let's see where the savings come in. If we have one combined warehouse, we have 131 units in safety stock. If we have seven individual warehouses, each warehouse has a safety stock of 50, but now there's seven of them, so we have 350 units of safety. That's a big difference. That's actually big, 
a difference of 219 units. And that means you're not holding on to 219 units and the cost of those 219 units can be spent elsewhere. So that's the major advantage of combining the inventory. That concludes the whole session on inventory. And in our next grouping, we'll be moving into Six Sigma. I'll see you then.